All right, why don't we get started? Um, first of all, thank you all for, for coming today. For uh, This is our uh, Community Mitigation Fund Municipal Block Grant uh, Workshop. Uh, and uh, uh, so a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, we are recording this. Uh, we recorded the earlier session on Tuesday and we're recording this one as well. We're gonna put these up on the website in case anybody wants to go back and, and uh, review the, 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 the presentation. Um, uh, by way of introductions, uh, I'm Joe Delaney, uh, Chief of Community Affairs. Um, and um, with me is uh, Mary Thurlow and Lily Wallace, our, our uh, Community Mitigation Fund staff. Um, so a um, couple of, we will be stopping for questions and answers a couple of times during the presentation. Um, if you do have something uh, that you that you wanna ask um, outside of those breaks, uh, feel free to use the chat function, uh, which is at the bottom, it should be at the bottom of your, your screen. Um, and you can type in questions there, and we'll we'll go through those uh, when we when we break for for questions. Uh, you can also ask questions uh, at that time. Uh, we do ask uh, that you stay muted uh, during the presentations. And um, I think everybody, I don't think we have anyone on the phone. Okay, so we don't. And let's see, uh, the other thing is we will be uh, loading uh, up the, the PowerPoint deck that we have today, if we haven't done that already, uh, up on, onto our website. So you'll be able to uh, access that. So today uh, we're gonna be talking with you. Uh, we're gonna go over what's new with the program, which is a lot. Um, we've really restructured this entire uh, program uh, from what had been sort of a competitive uh, a grant program into a block grant program for the communities. Uh, and after we go through the what's new, we will walk you through uh, the application form. Uh, we're not gonna go through uh, every category of grant, but we'll walk through a couple of them so you get the flavor of what it is that we're, we're looking for. Um, we have put up uh, on our website um, a, uh, an example form so you, uh, you can go into that and take a look at, at, at that. Um, and that will be the last thing that we'll do today is we will do a walkthrough of our website so that we can show you how to find uh, some of the things that you might be needing when you're filling out your applications. So with that, I'm going to uh, share my screen and start our uh, presentation. Okay, so uh, jumping right in, um, what's new for this year? As I said, there's really there's a lot that's new. Um, the first thing is that we have done is we created this two-tiered uh, pro grant program, the municipal block grant, which is the subject of, of this meeting, and also uh, of the regional agency grant, which is designed for uh, the regional planning agencies, uh, the DA's offices, and, and uh, our workforce uh, uh, programs. Uh, we won't really be talking about that particularly today. We have a separate session on that next week uh, where we've invited all of the regional agencies to that one. Um, so on the grant applications for the municipal block grants, um, and you'll hear this a couple of times during this presentation because this is this is very important. Um, municipalities will be required to submit a single application for the entire community. So what that means is if your community is wanting to apply for a, some public safety money, but they also want to apply to do some kind of a transportation planning study or um, a gambling harm reduction study, uh, you guys are gonna to have to all get together and figure out um, you know, how you want to divvy up the money uh, and, uh, and put that all together into a single application. So if a municipality does not apply by January 31st, uh, the community will forfeit the funds for that year. 
um, our statute requires that applications be submitted before February 1st. So that is the only uh, date that is in um, the statute and, and we are, are bound uh, to that. Uh, the third thing is we have provided more detailed project guidance. Uh, so if you look at our guidelines and so, and everyone who was invited to this meeting or who received an invitation from us, the guidelines are attached to that. So if you would, uh, uh, please open those and take a look at them and download them and, and uh, save them because you, you, you will be needing those as you're preparing your applications. But in those uh, guidelines, what we did was we uh, presented what we agree to be the impacts of the casinos. Um, and then we also uh, provided a list of the types of projects that, that, that could be eligible to, to address some of those impacts. And we also added in uh, some items that are not eligible. We have found over the years that we've received applications that, um, that really weren't eligible for funding. So we try to outline those so communities uh, you know, aren't wasting their time uh, applying for something that's not eligible. Uh, fourth item are administrative costs. Uh, a community can now use up to seven and a half percent of the grant uh, towards uh, the cost of administering the grant. And we put, there is a cap on that of uh, $50,000. So, you know, the person who is uh, submitting the quarterly reports or putting together the, the payment estimates uh, for submission to us, uh, all of those kinds of activities, you can charge uh, some of those off against the grant itself. So uh, hopefully that will make it uh, a little bit easier for uh, communities, um, you know, to recoup some of their costs. Um, item number five, uh, we are providing this year some funding for the regional planning agencies. Uh, again, we're not gonna really talk about that today um, this is, those are for, uh, you know, the, the regional planning agencies uh, that where the casinos are located. Uh, but with that said, uh, if some of the, your communities have uh, sort of a regional type of project or you want to work with a, a few other communities, you might want to approach uh, your regional planning agency to see if that might be a project that is either better done by them or to be done in conjunction with them. Uh, so uh, that's something for, for the communities to think about a little bit. Uh, the next item is we are converting to a fiscal year. So uh, in the past, we, we operated on a calendar year, but, uh, but really we worked pretty much on a fiscal year uh, basis where we do our reviews through the, the winter and the spring and, and try to get awards out to communities by the end of June, which coincides with a typical fiscal year. The one difference here is that um, by going to the fiscal year, well, it puts us in line with the, how the commission itself operates and, and also how most of our communities operate. Uh, but what that would do is that uh, the grants would be starting on uh, July 1, which means you couldn't incur any expenses uh, before that. And typically the first payments on those uh, grants wouldn't go out until I think September or there, thereabouts. So, um, so that is a change to the program. Uh, the, the next item is waivers. Um, waivers have always been available in the, uh, the Community Mitigation Fund program. If there's anything that's in the guidelines um, that, that, you, you know, that you can't meet, uh, you can submit a waiver application uh, or a waiver form, I should say. And, uh, but in this case, for the community block grant program, uh, when we, you know, we sent out the amounts to each community, every, every community received a, 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 you know, a grant amount that they are eligible for. And uh, if a community has any kind of a particular project that, that would cause the community to exceed that grant allotment, you can request a waiver for that project. Um, what we don't want to have happen, you know, with this program is that, um, especially if some of the communities who are getting smaller amounts of money, if they had a, you know, a large uh, transportation construction project or something like that, um, the, the, the grant might not be adequate for that. So we want to 
you know, account for that eventuality. And then in um, the last one is in the transportation uh, category, we've made some changes to that. We will talk about that um, a little bit later. And in, in addition, we'll talk about waivers a little bit more uh, towards the end of the presentation. So what hasn't changed? Um, as has always been the case, and this is basically, you know, we are required to do this by statute, Every project that is done under this program has to identify a casino related impact and the project that you're proposing has to mitigate that impact. So that has always been the case and, and always will be the case. Um, but what we have done is we have tried to make that identification of the casino related impact easier for the communities. Um, so, how do you determine a casino related impact? Well, the first thing to do is to go into our guidelines and look in your various grant categories. And in each one, you will see that we have added in impacts that we, there's a, that the gaming commission agrees are likely to be caused by the casinos. Now, what we did was we looked through all of our research. We uh, actually used an outside consultant to do some research in other, um, uh, jurisdictions uh, in, around the country and around the world to see uh, what other kinds of studies may have been done to identify casino related impacts. Um, you know, we, we did some, you know, internet searches and other things. And, um, you know, we came up with those items that we agree uh, would be uh, impacts of the casino. And here on this slide, so th this Grio is, is the company that we use to, uh, to help us um, uh, look at some other jurisdictions. So all of those studies uh, or, and uh, all of the MGC research and so on is all on our website. Um, and again, we'll walk through the website a little bit uh, later. Um, and the last bullet we have here is other. Um, you know, there could be other sources of information that we didn't find that you may have or, uh, you know, may have access to or whatever it might be. Um, you know, if a community is going to use something that has not been identified either in our guidelines or in our research, um, you know, you would have to provide some good uh, solid justification for that impact and some studies or some, you know, some kind of backup documentation that would, uh, that would justify that. But what we're saying here is if you use our guidelines, you can pick those um, impacts and we accept those as being impacts. So hopefully that will make your lives um, a lot easier. And then the last uh, new item that I wanted to talk about here is uh, we have in the guidelines, we have suggested grant spending across the categories. The commission would really like to see um, the money uh, that's in this project um, uh, go to the various different categories that, that we have. So right now there are, there are five categories. There's community planning, transportation, public safety, and uh, gambling harm reduction. And we also have the other category of specific impact, which is basically anything that doesn't fit in those four categories. So what we're suggesting is we'd like to see a, kind of a minimum spending of 15% of the grant in each one of the categories, which would then leave 40% to be spent, you know, either a higher amount in any one category. Now, originally we looked at this and saying, do we want to make this a requirement, uh, you know, similar to like what they do with the Community Preservation Act? And we decided to not do that for this year. Um, so this is not a uh, requirement for fiscal year 2025. Um, we will, uh, look and see how communities have done with that, um, with that uh, suggestion. And, um, you know, we'll monitor that and see if maybe in the future, that's something that we want to, um, you know, to consider. But at this point, um, you know, we are not, we are not proposing to do that. So with that, let me, um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. And um, I guess we'll open this up for um, some questions. Okay, do we have anything in the chat? No. Okay. 
Okay, and any any questions from anyone? No? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, Eric. Yeah, I'm just wondering if the amounts that are available in all the categories and all of the um, grants there are the same as in the October 13th document. Um, we did a finalized document uh, okay. that the commission voted on November 16th Some, or so. Yeah. I think there was a couple of, there might've been a couple of revised numbers from that earlier, that okay. earlier one. Eric, I think when I... I Oh, go ahead, Lily. I was just going to say, Eric, when I walk through the website um, later in this presentation, I'll show you I have both the memo online and the finalized amounts. Awesome. Okay. And did I see it? Um, let's see. I think Everett had a question. Deputy Hurley, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I just typed it in the chat, but uh, oh. essentially, um, now that there will be a, a group project, for lack of a better term, uh, what are the, is there new financial limitations, restrictions? How much can you ask for as an entirety of a group? Well, yeah, we sent, so each community received an, a, an allocation letter. Okay. So, um, so we, we came up with a formula where we said, it, where we divvied up the money among the communities. So you have a set amount of money now. And then basically, you know, in, in your case, you'll probably need to get together with you know, the police department and with Jay Monty and, and some of your, your other folks and figure out, you know, you know, what, with the amount of money that you have available, how do you want to try to divvy it up? Okay. Um, and so we, we, so we really eliminated a lot of the, the category caps that we had, because we're saying essentially you have this set amount of money, that's your cap. Okay. If I, um, if I put my email in the chat, would I be able to get a copy of that? I'm sure. on an invite from an invite and I, I don't have that information yet. So sure. I would, uh, love it. Thank you very much. Sure. Yep. sure. Um, so I see a, a question here. What is the timing for approval notification? Um, so, so we would, we get your applications in, uh, at the end of January and, you know, we will start reviewing them immediately. But our target is to have all of the awards done uh, before the end of June, um, so that um, you know, so that they're, all of the stuff is awarded for the start of the fiscal year. And then let's see uh, another question that came through here. Uh, might come through during the waiver segment later, but I'd be curious if there is or uh, will be any sort of guidance, advice on waivers or if that will be at the discretion of the MGC staff. Um, so in our guidelines, there is some, uh, uh, there is a section on waivers. It talks about what you have to submit and, and what you have to essentially prove on the waivers. Um, but essentially the waivers are going to be uh, subject to, ultimately the commission will approve those waivers uh, or deny those waivers. And they will be based on, they will be looked at on a case by case basis and certainly will be um, based on whether or not there's available funding. Uh, if, if it's a financial waiver, uh, we have to make sure that there's uh, available funding for that. Um, in the current year, it appears that there is, you know, there are some funds out there that would be able to, uh, to be used. So, um, uh, but again, we would have to, at that time, we would have to look and make sure that there's, there are available funds. Um, another question another came question to, are there any, oh, uh, uh, James uh, Floyd, I see a hand up there. Yep, thank you. Um, just a question regarding regional um, efforts. Um, Bayburn is a regional radio system that um, it's separated into different sections of the state. And it's a system that's really, really aging. Um, and it's one of our abilities to have interop interoperability with communication with state police, uh, NEMA, FEMA, and all these other things. And again, really, at the end of the day, these are essentially soft targets that um, if there were to be a critical incident, um, we need to have something, um, a regional system, such as a Bayburn system, that supports that. So the block grants really don't cover that in a sense. 
if I understood it correctly, because it's gonna it would include multiple regions um, that would overlap. Um, so yeah. how would we approach that? So I think what you what this sounds like to me is that this is really more of a regional agency grant. Um, you know, as a as a public safety uh, agency that covers multiple communities. Um, so, so you would not apply under this block grant. You would apply under the uh, the regional agency grant. And we're having a we're gonna we're having another workshop on those regional agency grants next Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Uh, if you'd like us to send you an invite for that one, we, we can certainly do that. Um, and, um, but that, that would, I think would have to be the approach. And of course, one of the, the things on this is, again, we have, to, we have to make that nexus to the casino. There has to be an identified impact of the casino uh, to, to fund any of these types of projects. Yep, um, not a problem at all. And really, it's, it's really comes to a, the, really the 9-11 report. One of the biggest failures in 9-11 was the inab inability to communicate interagency. Um, and Bayburn actually facilitates that. So it would be supporting that. So I think we can do that. Thank you. Okay, so so that I think that would be your avenue is, is the, uh, um, the, the uh, regional uh, application. Okay, so there's another question here. Are any of the attachments project specific or are all attachments required for the submission? Um, I'm not exactly sure I understand the question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Hi there. I'll try to clarify. Sorry. Okay. Sure. Confessions. I haven't made it all the way through the um, attachments. And so I was trying to understand um, like the environmentally preferable product form. I'm like, is that for every project or is that for certain projects? So I, I just didn't know if some were project specific or if everything in that attachment packet has to be submitted with the application. I, I don't. I don't know what I'm form not, you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'll go back and review it. I. I it's called so an environmentally we're... preferable product form. So I just. No, that's not confused. us. Is that something called Interesting. Was that in? Um, you... Yeah, it was part state of the form. application in Combi's. Uh, okay, state form. Uh, oh, okay, so nice. firstly, um, I'll, 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 I'll go out of order here a little bit. Uh, we, you <laughs> don't need to go. You don't need to go through Combi's at all. At no. all, okay. No, so you, you're going to submit. You. you can just get the application forms from our website, fill them out, and you're going to email them to us. That makes it 100 percent easier. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got we got rid of combines. We still have to go through <laughs> combines as a, as a state agency, but we found a workaround so that everybody didn't have to file through combines. So wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, because boy, I have no idea what that form is. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was curious. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, any any further questions? Uh, that was all that was in the chat. Okay. All right. Well, all right. We... Just another um, grass. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. If people want to just send me a quick note, if you want to receive a copy of the allocation letter, just send me your email address, and I'll send it off to you after the meeting. Okay, Joe, that's it. okay. Uh, so let me go back to the uh, presentation. Um, okay. Okay, so I think we just talked about this a little bit. Um, but so the application process. Um, and again, please read the guidelines uh, before filling out your application. Um, you know, there's a lot of good information in there. Um, now, and again, you, all of the municipalities have received a proposed grant amount letter. So um, that went to your uh, CEOs, mayors, town managers, and so on. And we did copy a number of other people in each community. So um, if for some reason a community has not received that letter, please let us know. Um, but I believe we we verified we've with all of the communities that they that that they have received one. Um, the applications have to be submitted by 11:59 p.m. on January 31st. We'll have a timestamp on these things when they are emailed to us, so we'll know when we got them. Uh, if we we can't receive them after that, 
uh, you know, I what I would say is if you have an application that um, you think still might need some work, get it into us anyway, and and we can probably you know take some uh, supplemental information later if we need to. Uh, but I mean, obviously, we want to see them as complete as possible. And again, the municipalities may only submit one application for the entire community. Um, we will not accept you know, a separate thing from, you know, previously we would get something from a fire department, a police department, a, you know, planning department, a public works department. Uh, sometimes uh, in some of the communities, we'd get them from all of those different agencies. We will no longer allow that. It needs to be one application and it will have some parts in it for the different projects, but uh, it will be a, a single application and that has to be signed. Uh, by, you know, a municipal employee who has signatory authority, we figure that will typically be the mayor or the town manager or town administrator of some sort. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn this over now to Mary, and she's going to walk you through the application itself. We came up with a kind of a fictional town that we, uh, that we did, and, um, and just so you can see what, what an application might look like. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mary. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I, we wanted to show you this because it, uh, we really want complete applications this year. We do not want people to say C attachment B or whatever. So we're just going to walk through very briefly. So this is what we want the uh, municipal application to look like. The municipal grant manager information is critical because they are responsible for collecting the applications and attachments for submission of the full application. The uh, municipal grant manager will receive this information from the contract for each category. As we get into this, to the applications, you'll see that each category of grant will have its own project contact person and municipalities will need to be sure they update any changes which occur to these listings. Um, it's really through uh, contacting everyone that I've noticed that there's a lot of turnaround this time of year so we really would appreciate um, being updated whenever there's a change in your contract management. Uh, it's really critical because um, when selecting a municipal grant manager that um, they are responsible for the quarterly reports. So the municipal grant manager will compile the quarterly reports from all the project contract people within the municipality for a submission to the commission. So um, if people can just keep in mind that if there's a change in your uh, employees, please let us know. Next. Okay, here is the budget category summary. And I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things. You'll notice here that the total fiscal year 2025 allocation is 400,000. If you go down to the total of the application, you'll see that it's 1477,300. So I just wanted to call your attention to that and we'll explain um, in a minute. Um, and then I also want to call your attention to the public safety and the and the transportation. So this means that there's two specific uh, projects for each of these two categories, and this is the total of of those two applications. So. Um, Let's see. So the grant applications, the proposed grant amount was sent out by letter to all eligible municipalities on November 17th, as Joe said. And um, so they're aware of how much funding is available. When filling, uh, and then let's go to the next page, Joe. Yep. Okay. When filling in the description in your categories, please be sure to distinguish it from other grants. The goal of this is to provide like an example. Um, it would be great if you could, if you would say the goal of this ap application is to provide a boardwalk from A to Z. We do not want people to fill in these descriptions saying that this is for a community mitigation grant. That doesn't help us distinguish between the different grants. You will also note that um, the descriptions here, see, as you can see, a complete street study of Main Street from Linden and con conversion that uh, 
these are two different grants. The grant that uh, is going to need a waiver form would be this grant here, the one thousand seventy five. One million seventy-five thousand uh, uh, dollars. The overage is caused by the transportation grants, and the application um, would be for that the difference, so that you can apply. Boy, I'm having a hard time getting words out today. I'm sorry. Um, so you would need to file a waiver form for this multi-use path construction. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. We can go to the next one. And then this one, the applicant certification. Again, we need to be sure that you have someone with the authority to commit funds on behalf of the municipality to sign the document. And that's about it. Okay, we're going to turn this over to Lily now to, to walk through uh, some of the nuts and bolts of, of uh, a couple of the uh, specific applications for categories. Thanks, Joe. So as Joe just said, this is going to be the meat of your application. You can kind of see here the different parts that are going to make up the whole municipality's application. All fun, different colors. So you can feel free as a... Um, administrator to just, you know, <laughs> cut cut out the different pieces and send them to the appropriate uh, departments uh, and then recompile them back together. So you can hit the next. Yeah, and this is simply a Word document. So it's, uh, yep. I think most most folks have uh, the familiarity with Word. Um, you know, these can be cut apart and, and sent out easily. Yeah, so they're online as both a fillable PDF and a Word document. I did just check that that was updated. So uh, if you're having any trouble with that, again, we will be walking the website later. Um, so we have two examples that I'm going to walk you through real quick. Uh, this first example is a community planning grant. You'll see that your community planning grant, each individual discrete project is going to need a name so that we can make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Uh, and then each project will have a project contact. So we've made space for two contacts. And then we ask if you have, you know, a whole team working on this that you just circulate, uh, circulate it internally. Uh, but just give us if you want, you know, one or two people that are going to be the key person for this. Um, with this new style of grant, we assume that the main administrator of the grant is not going to know the nuts and bolts of the every single project. So this will be the person we'll be contacting if we have questions or we want to check in on the status. So the first section is, you know, the big piece we're talking about, identifying the impact of the casino. So there's two main ways that you can do this. The way that we're suggesting, if it works for you, is that we took all of that research that was done through the Mass Gaming Commission, through GRIO, uh, and we made lists under every single category in our guidelines. So you'll see on the right side here, I have a screenshot of our guidelines. And you can see that this community uh, decided to utilize the first impact here under a negative impact, saying that competition from the gaming establishment had negative impacts on their businesses. So what's really nice about this year, uh, I'm sure for anyone who's applied to the previous years, you know, you don't really have to, to drag that out. You know, we are accepting that as a completely valid uh, reason for this grant. You can just copy and paste it right over. You know, if you want to add a sentence or two just describing, particularly in your town, how that works, you know, we'd love to have it. Um, but at minimum, if it's in the guidelines, you can just drag it right out. Uh, the more complicated piece of this is going to be if you don't use something that's directly in the guidelines. So if you're not going to use something that's directly outlined in the guidelines, that is also totally fine. If there's some Thing that's happening in your community that you'd like to address with this grant program, you're just going to have to do a little bit more legwork in this first section to describe to us what is happening, what is the impact, and you're also going to have to provide us a little bit more um, detailed research or evidence on this. So whether that, you know, previously for public safety is crime statistics, whether that is, you know, a traffic map that, you know, your community has done a traffic study. Uh, but again, if you are not using an impact that's been identified, it still doesn't mean that it's you know not a valid project. Uh, you are just again going to have to go into quite a bit more detail explaining what's happening and how that is uh, something that we should be mitigating. So you yeah, can to the just, next. Oh, oh yeah, just just to add on to that, um, as as many of you probably know from previous years in doing this, you know the identification of the impact was probably the most difficult uh, thing in in the application, um, and. Uh, you know, and we have had to deny many applications because we didn't have sufficient, you know, evidence that that uh, 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 that an impact really existed. So, 
if you're doing this this second method where you where you're giving us an impact that's not included in the guidelines, you will still need to do that justification that you had to do previously, and um, you know we 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 need to have sufficient evidence that shows that that's uh, a legitimate impact. Great. So then uh, again, like we've very uh, made a, a very simple looking form, but it is a little deceptively simple. So in section two is really where you're going to have to put in what your mitigation is. So this here is a pretty abbreviated mitigation just because of the size of a of a slide. <laughs> it would be kind of unrealistic for me to fit, you know, three pages on a slide. So in this um, example, the town felt that they were losing business. So the way that they wanted to deal with that was increased signage. So they said that they were going to do signage with their restaurants, hotels, and shops, and they were going to use the funding to get a consultant to come in and design it, and then have their Department of Public Works uh, make the signs. And then they were going to use this to mitigate by having the casino uh, have some of these signs around there so that patrons that were coming to the casino could know about the other resources in the area. So you can see here that below this, we also have a mock-up of some great stock images uh, from the internet, uh, but uh, of this community's signs. So this section should be the bulk of your applications. We really do wanna see details. If you have scopes, if you have budgets, if you have diagrams, anything that can help explain the mitigation will really help that uh, our review team to understand the project and what you're asking to do. Um, and then you'll see in a, a later slide that there is also a detailed scope that you'll fill out. But this is more, again, like the narrative piece um, of your application. So as I put here, you know, this should be the longest section of your application. So Joe, you can hit the next slide. So here is our, my second example is kind of looking at the new combined transportation planning and construction application looks very similar, just in a different fun color. So you'll need to put, again, a title. You'll need to put, again, a project contact. You can see that this applicant chose from the guidelines, and they picked two different pieces about traffic congestion and traffic safety. Uh, and they then took that, and then they used that as a rationale of the issue, and then went through and said that they wanted to do a study for multi-community shared path to lead to the casino. Uh, we've seen this come out from a, a couple of different communities. Um, and then the piece in the bottom is uh, going to be covered by Joe in a little bit, just about the new construction subsidy. So we are changing how this looks and how the guidelines are, um, what is going to be eligible to be funded. Um, so if you are applying for transportation, please read that very carefully. Um, and then you can see below that we have the example of a grant budget. Um, this should be a pretty detailed breakdown of your line items. This is how the projects are going to be reviewed, uh, looking through each of the things. If you know we are looking to amend different pieces, we wanna make sure that we're looking at each discrete piece of your project. So you can see here that uh, they identified five different tasks. Uh, the town was gonna fund a couple of them, but then they were asking for the million dollars for their project construction. Uh, they provided a you know very pretty vague timeline. We don't need you to say that the construction is gonna begin you know, March 3rd, uh, but we do need to have a general timeline so that when we're checking in with you on the with the progress of the grant, we know where things stand and if there's anything that we need to be doing differently. So I think the next piece goes back to you, Joe. Great. Um, so yeah, there was a couple of uh, changes in the transportation uh, application. As you can see that from the previous one that we've combined transportation planning and transportation construction just into a single transportation category. But we've also changed the, the subsidy for the transportation construction projects. Previously, we said that we would pay up to one third of the project cost uh, to a maximum grant of one and a half million dollars. We're still keeping that one and a half million dollar maximum, but um, we have created kind of what now really winds up being a, a sliding scale that smaller projects receive a higher subsidy. So right now what we're saying is we will fund 100% of the project cost up to $250,000, and then we'll fund up to 30% of the costs above that amount. Uh, with a maximum again of, of the one and a half million dollars. Now, most communities, when they come in with transportation construction projects, most of communities only come in with, with probably one project. Um, 
what we're saying, what we're saying here is you, you can't come in and say uh, we want to do five different projects that are two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and get one hundred percent subsidy on. Them. Um, what we're trying to do here is say that we realize that smaller projects, and sometimes it's it's harder to um, to find the funding for for that particular project. So in this case, if there's more than one construction project, it's it's all additive. You have to add the total costs of the project together and then figure out the subsidy from that. Um, and I think I'll just go back to this previous slide. You can see that um, uh, we do the little in in part two of this uh, application. We do um, a, a calculation in there saying in in this case. Uh, the construction project uh, is estimated to be $3 million. And based on the guidelines, the grant would be $1,075,000, which is 100% of the first 250,000 and 30% of the amount in excess of that or two, of the 2.75 million. So, and again, this causes the town to, to exceed the uh, grant allocation of $400,000. So uh, a waiver request needs to be done for a project of this nature. Um, and then a couple of other things in the transportation uh, planning category. Um, we have added some of the maps into the guidelines that show where the distribution of traffic is going from the casinos. And what we're saying is transportation planning can be done, uh, but it, it can't be done on just sort of any road in town. It has to be on those uh, kind of major routes to the casino. Uh, so we're saying here that any road that's carrying at least 1% of the casino traffic would be eligible for, for work to be done on that road. But uh, anything that's you know really not identified here would not be eligible. Now, of course, if the community does have some additional information that shows that um, another uh, road uh, it's maybe off one of these roads is uh, significantly impacted by traffic and has something that can that can demonstrate that we will certainly consider that. But our baseline is saying if it carries one percent or more of the traffic, it's eligible. If it's under that, it's not. Um, and also, you know, we've done a lot of bike paths, multi-use paths. Um, uh, in this case, for, for uh, projects that communities want to do. Uh, the community has to demonstrate that any kind of a, a multi-use path or a bike path will connect into an existing path network that would provide access to the casino. Um, you know, if, if a community were doing um, a bike path that was, uh, you know, not going in the direction of the casino, uh, you know, that's, that's really on, on the community themselves. So uh, we do need to see, again, that nexus of, uh, you know, how maybe uh, employees particularly or patrons might, uh, you know, use a bicycle to get down to toward the facility. And let's talk about waivers. Um, again, uh, again, we say you can re request a waiver from any requirement of the guidelines. Uh, and that has always been the case. But here it's like if the municipality determines that the proposed grant allotment is insufficient to mitigate identified impacts, it may request a waiver for any of those specific projects. Now, what we're saying here is that this waiver is not really designed for kind of the routine expenses, but for you know, a significant project that would otherwise not be able to be funded under the grant. Uh, you know, if a community says, well, we've got $400,000 and we're putting $100,000 in each of the four categories, and, you know, uh, in one of the categories, the community says, well, we could really use $102,000. That's not the kind of thing that we're talking about here. You know, that's something you should probably, you know, maybe sharpen your pencil and, and get it down to the $100,000. Um, but this is for something where if the community, again, had a $400,000 allocation, and you've got this million dollar project, it's clear that it could never fit in the allocation. So that's what really what the waiver is for. Um, and again, we, the waiver forms are on, on our website and also um, uh, we, you know, we discussed them in the guidelines as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn this back over to Mary just to once again, walk through the uh, application submission process. So as, as we mentioned before, um, we, we 
we always have to post through combis, but what we want applicants to do is to submit their their applications through us at mgccmf uh, at massgaming.gov by January 31st. Um, we, we just found that uh, too many people had issues with the combi system and things were getting lost in the ethernet so this way they come to us and then we we upload them onto combis after that we've received them uh, the applications must be submitted as one word document please try to uh, integrate and label your relevant attachments as part of your application so if you're sending something in for a specific impact please uh, make sure that the attachment is labeled for the specific uh, impact application. If you have any questions prior to submission, please contact me. Contact any of us. We're happy to talk to you about it. Um, any questions are, are good questions, um, but we really are emphasizing that um, the due date is the 31st at 11.59 p.m. Uh, if you've been working on a an application and are waiting for information from an outside source for your application, but don't think it's going to be in on time for you to submit by the January 31st deadline, submit the application and let us know that you're waiting for information. Um, because it, you cannot come back to us on February 2nd with whatever information you are waiting for and apply then it doesn't work that way. So I'm hoping that you will feel free to contact Joe, Lily, or I uh, with any of your questions. Yeah, and, and just adding on to that, Mary, there's one thing that I, I did want to mention. Um, you know, we, we talked about each community receiving, um, you know, an allocation amount uh, for their grant. Uh, if for some reason your community can't identify projects that add up to that total, you can come in with a lower amount. Um, you know, we'd love to see everybody come in for the, for the, for the total amount, but you know, if for whatever reason, uh, your community only identifies, uh, uh, you know, a, a one or two small projects, um, come in with that anyway. Uh, you know, we won't, we won't uh, penalize you for not coming in for the full amount. You can certainly come in for a lower amount. And I think at this point, uh, we're going to have we got some questions. Can oh, we? Well, let's, uh, we're going to do the website walkthrough first, and then, okay. we'll, then we'll do some questions. All right. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. OK, so uh, if everyone can see my screen, this is the Massachusetts Gaming Commission website. Uh, just a quick little point out, it is massgaming.com, not massgaming.gov, as you might uh, suspect. So just make sure you're seeing that. Uh, if you go to your About section here, you can scoot down to Community Mitigation Fund. And then you will see our new and updated website. So there's a lot of great information for you to use here. Um, this is our main piece, which has the combines posting uh, and as well as the trainings that we currently have. Uh, we will be posting all of the training videos as well as the PowerPoint here probably this afternoon. Um, so this is kind of your little basic uh, background on the program. Uh, if you go into the side rail on the left, you'll find a piece for the application guidelines. So right here, if you click, you will get our full program guidelines. As we noted, you really should uh, read through those fully and make sure that the people that are filling out the different applications are reading through their sections fully, um, as there have been a lot of changes and there are a lot of great resources to strengthen your application. Uh, as Eric asked for earlier, here's the final allocations by municipality. And then if anyone in your community is wondering why that was your allocation, there is a memo from the October meeting of the commission on uh, the final funding numbers. So one of the pieces that Joe pointed to earlier was all of the great research that has been done. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, both internally, the um, Massachusetts Gaming Commission has one of the strongest research agendas in the country. So there's a lot of really great research that you can use there to bolster your applications. Specifically, if you are looking for um, funding for a community engaged research study, the commission has a bunch of those that you can look through uh, to get some ideas of what might be relevant to your community. Uh, Joe had mentioned GRIA, which is a uh, third party that we use to create slide decks on 
that then led to a lot of the um, choices of impact. So there are three of them. One of them is specifically on economic impacts. One is specifically on public safety. And one of them is on priority populations. So if you are applying for anything related to any of those three groupings, these are some pretty uh, in-depth slideshows that will give you some examples. Um, and then for those applying for transportation, uh, we have uploaded both Encore MG, uh, Encore's distribution maps as well as their table, MGM's distribution table and map, and PPC's distribution map. So please use all these things. We put them up there for your benefit uh, and they will really help uh, strengthen applications. So again, if we go to the left side, you'll see a section titled FY25 forms. If you click on here, you will get into the actual applications. So for municipalities, you can click right here and get your application form. Uh, and we also, as we said, made a fake application for the town of Sudburnham uh, that you can kind of read through here. This one I think is about 25 pages, um, but you can kind of see and get a feel for what an application might look like. Um, and then uh, if you are applying for a, a waiver, make sure that you're filling out the municipal waiver form uh, if you are a municipality. Uh, and then our regional applicants will use these forms. Also, just as a, a fun note for everyone who currently has a grant, if you're looking for any of these forms, they are still on here for your waiver request form, your budget, uh, and all of those. But please make sure that if you are applying for this year's waiver, you use the municipal FY 2025 waiver. Um, another great resource on our website is that you can click and find every single award that we have granted from 2015 onward. Uh, this is our archive, just click through a year. Um, and then you can go through these and see um, some of the things that were funded previously. Just because they were funded previously doesn't mean that we would necessarily fund your project. If you know word for word copied it over, they are taken on a case by case basis. But you can see all these applications if you're looking for projects that you might want to do in your city, you can see what has been previously awarded. So that is kind of a brief run through of our website. Okay, and I think we will open things up for questions again. Um, why, don't we, why don't I start with what's on the chat? Um, uh, let's see. Where we let's see where we left off. Um, one second. Okay, the uh, first one is the allocation what's listed on page 29 of the guidelines. Um, I believe so. Is that, that we did include that as an attachment, didn't we? Yeah. Um, oops. Heaven. A little trouble navigating here. Um, okay, I can run through the oh, questions. No, um, uh, what are the limitations on waiver requests? Is it a number of waivers over time, a dollar amount? Uh, what are the criteria for consideration of waivers? Um, so I think in, in the guidelines, we have what the specific requirements are for a waiver. Um, I don't remember them exactly off the top of my head. But uh, there isn't a limitation on waiver requests. Um, you know, for instance, let's say you were doing a transportation construction project. One of the things that we require is that they have to be ready to go basically within a year. So we understand that people aren't necessarily going to have their project ready to go that, right when they apply. So we're saying that for, for this coming year, your, your project has to be ready to go by June 30th of 2025. If you said, well, we don't think we our project is going to be in the ground until September 1st of 2025, you could request a waiver asking for an extension of time. So um, so th that's the kind of thing now, as far as a, um, uh, the, you know, on the, um, on the financial amount, uh, you know, we haven't specified that um, is, you know, a number, the number of waivers or so on, but um, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, our, we envision it as being sort of a, like there's going to be a single project that is going to, that, it's, that would cause your, you to go over your grant amount. Um, and then that would be, uh, you know, a, a single waiver request for that. Um, 
So then the, the next question is on the transportation planning eligibility map. How recent is this data and is will it be revisited periodically? Um, you know, these did come out of the original environmental reports that were done for the casinos. Um, one of the, the things about updating this information is, um, you know, the, 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 the studies that, that the facilities are required to do um, don't really uh, break down all of the, the, the locations where uh, the traffic is going like they did originally. Um, you know, they're, they're only looking at like traffic intersections and looking at changes in levels of service and things like that. So it's, um, um, uh, you know, trying to update that, I think we, we would have to uh, kind of go back uh, and work with the, the licensees. And what we're going to try to do is get some additional data from them regarding their uh, patrons and employees and where they're coming from and so on. Uh, we weren't really able to do that for this year. Um, but, you know, we have to get that data. We got to get it anonymized and make sure it's what we're looking for. But yeah, we, we do want to try to update those numbers and that would affect, uh, um, of course, uh, part of the grant amount is based on traffic. So uh, that would might modify that as well. Um, Another question, are municipalities encouraged to apply for more funds than allocated? I wouldn't say that necessarily. Um, I would say if there is a clear need in the community uh, to address a specific impact that would cause you to go over that amount, um, you know, you, you can do that. I think we, we looked at this as kind of a, um, uh, kind of a fallback position. We're saying, you know, that a community could possibly have something that would that would go over their grant amount, but um, you know, at some point uh, there would not be any excess funds that we that we could even award those grants. So you know, it, right now we do have some some extra funds in the program uh, where we can do that. But uh, if that surplus that's in the program is 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 whittled down uh, in future years, there may there may not be money. So I would say you're not encouraged to apply for more funds than allocated. Uh, but if if the community really has the need, um, you should certainly uh, feel free to do that. Um, and it's. Um, for a funding waiver, is that only to exceed the overall amount or can it be used to fund more from certain categories than others within the overall amount? Um, so for this year, we're not requiring spending within the different categories. Uh, we, we gave a suggested amount for the categories, but um, that is not a hard and fast rule. So, so you can move uh, money around in the, in the categories as, as you see fit. Um, so you would not need a waiver um, if you were using more money in one category than another. Uh, the, the waiver would only be required if you're going over the total uh, allotment for the community. Um, yeah, from Medford, uh, again, talking about updated traffic uh, uh, stuff, we, we certainly want to try to do that. Um, just we're not really able to, to get that done for while well, we were making all of the other changes uh, to the program this year. Um, and then let's see, we've got, um, oh, do categories need to be equally used? No, the answer is no, they do not. Um, we would like to see communities spend money among the different categories because we know that there are impacts in all of those. Look, well, I guess what we were kind of getting at when, when we looked at this originally is we don't want to see a community say like we want all of the money to go to public safety or we want all of the money to go to construction and you know to the exclusion of, of other things that are worthy in the community and that's why we thought about uh, requiring money to go into the different categories but again we are not requiring that for for this year we'll see in the future what 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 else we might want to do uh and when the um also asking where can the suggested split between categories be found? Um, that is in the guidelines. Um, we are suggesting a you know 15% of the grant amount be spent among those four categories and 40%, that leaves you with 40% that you can put sort of wherever you want. Um, and again, that's just a, a suggestion uh, at this point, uh, no, no hard and fast required. 
Okay, and that is everything that's come up in the chat. Are there any other uh, questions from folks? All right, uh, none appearing. Um, and I wanna thank everybody for coming. Uh, and as Mary said, if you guys have any questions, uh, any follow-ups to anything, feel free to reach out to us via email, phone call, carrier pigeon, whatever, whatever way you uh, want to contact us. Um, you know, if you have ideas for uh, projects and you want to bounce them off of us, we're happy to listen. Uh, you know, we, we can't give you uh, firm decisions on things, uh, you know, when we're talking about an idea, but we can give you uh, some guidance at least on, on, on how you might approach uh, some of these things. Um, but again, thanks for coming. Uh, we, we wound up having a, a pretty good showing. Uh, I think uh, we're up around 40 folks on the call today. We had 75 people at our uh, meeting on Tuesday. So we've, we've reached a lot of folks and, um, you know, and if there's anybody else in your communities that you think uh, needs, to, needs to be involved, you know, we'll have all of this information up on our website and, um, you know, we really look forward to uh, this new process. We think it's gonna be, we're hoping it's going to be easier for all of you. We're hoping it's gonna be a little easier for us as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to this. Uh, January 31st is our deadline. And, um, you know, we look forward to working with you guys over uh, the next uh, years. So with that, um, I guess happy holidays to everyone and uh, we'll all be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.